So, you're looking to buy one of the new 2020 M1 Max, hey? Well, you've come to the right place. Now, unlike all the other videos out there that take 15 minutes to get to the point, I'm just going to give it to you straight up. There are only two reasons why you should upgrade to the 16 gigabyte memory version over the 8 gigabyte, regardless of if you're buying a Pro, Mini, or Air. Number one, if you have the money and your budget easily covers the cost of the upgrade, then go for it. The only downside to having more RAM is it costs more initially. Reason number two, if you're planning on doing intensive video editing, photo manipulation in Lightroom or Photoshop, or you're a 3D artist or developer, go for the 16 gigabyte version. Now, when I say intensive, I mean intensive. As you're about to see, the 8GB version of the M1 Max destroys almost anything you throw at it already, and I'll show you exactly why. Let's start with video editing. Now, I've had absolutely zero issues editing and rendering 4K footage on both DaVinci Resolve and Adobe Premiere Pro. I have a Sony A7 Mark III full-frame camera, and I record all of my footage in full 4K resolution at 100 megabits per second. In Resolve, I can load all of this footage in, add color correction, LUTs, and even some fusion transitions, and it works perfectly. Scrubbing the timeline is smooth, rendering is quick, and this is all on my base model MacBook Air with no fan and only 8 gigabytes of memory. I've even tried it with BMPCC 6K B-RAW footage with LUTs added and was able to play it back in real time with only a few minor adjustments in the Resolve settings. Moving on to productivity and multitasking, 8GB is more than enough for all your needs. Even if you're a hardcore Chrome user who often has 50 plus tabs open, the Mac will handle it easily. I've made several videos showcasing this. I opened 20 to 30 tabs in Chrome while using Photoshop, Word, Excel, playing Spotify and 4K videos in the background and the 8GB Macs don't even bat an eye. I even did a time lapse with Activity Monitor open on the screen to prove it. I've tested Excel spreadsheets that are 40 plus megabytes in size with 75,000 plus rows, 15 4K YouTube videos playing in real time on Chrome, and even browsing multiple Safari tabs while the Mac is rendering 4K footage in Resolve. Side note, a lot of people loved my productivity setup in this video, so I will add Amazon links to all the products featured in the description below. The monitor and laptop stand in particular are absolutely awesome, and I highly recommend them to everyone. Next, we have gaming. Yes, you absolutely can game on this Mac. Check out this video where I literally turn my MacBook Air into a gaming rig. I'm even able to set decent graphical settings and get a consistent 60 FPS on a lot of less resource intensive games. At the moment, there aren't a huge amount of games that are compatible, but I expect this to rapidly change. The most important thing is that you can play Fortnite in 60 FPS, right? If you're a Photoshop or a Lightroom user, the 8GB of memory will suit all but the most hardcore of projects. I create streaming templates occasionally, link to download some of them in the description by the way, and the unfinished templates I use regularly result in Photoshop files of sometimes a few gigabytes in size. I also use Lightroom to edit car photos shot in RAW format, and so far I've had no issues with just the 8GB. So that is pretty much everything I can think of. If you have any specific questions about the M1 Max memory choice, or if you want me to test something, please comment below and I'll do my best to help you out. But I can confidently say over the last few days of testing that the 8GB memory option will be more than enough for 95% of users and you'll be very happy with your choice. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I will catch you in the next one.